Hello friends, welcome to the TYBSC IT Semester 5, the Internet of Things Practicals. Today's practical is number 4, that is generating oscilloscope simulation based on Raspberry Pi. So here are the project requirements. They are actually divided into two, that is hardware requirements and software requirements. In hardware requirements, we need a Raspberry Pi microcontroller. We need a 16 GB SD card. We need a LAN or Ethernet cable. We need a power supply. We need uh, this analog to digital converter. So the component name is ADS1115 ADC. We need a LDR. Here this is optional. We need 10K or 1K register. Here I'm going to use a potentiometer. We need the jumper wires, we need a breadboard and we need a monitor. So here I am going to use my laptop screen to extend the display of Raspberry Pi microcontroller. The software requirement is just a Python module, Python ID that I require to execute the code. And prior to that I need some uh, dependencies to be installed. So for that I will be using command prompt of Raspberry Pi. Here is the program. This program you can find on internet also. This program is designed to listen the channel 1 of ADC. There is a component ADC that we have just seen. That component have got four different channels, channel 0 to channel 3. To listen to channel 0, we are using this gain value on a channel then that value will be plotted using a graph. So this all settings are used to plot a graph. Uh, that graph will actually show the simulation of oscilloscope. And here is the infinite loop. In that infinite loop, we are going to update that graph after every value is gained on that channel. Here is how the IDE, Python IDE will look like on which you are going to write a program for generating oscilloscope. Here is the output. This is what the simulation of the oscilloscope. Here you can see that the values are plotted are between the scale minus 4000 to plus 4000. If the values are going beyond this 4000 as a scale, the values will not be plotted as we have taken these values accordingly. So if we can increase the scale, that will be also the maximum values or the values which are beyond 4000 scale will also be displayed on this screen. Here are the set of instructions or the steps that we need to perform before executing the code. These steps are given on this website, uh, website also so one can actually go to this website uh, this website has nicely explained all the steps to be performed to use Raspberry Pi oscilloscope here is the circuit setup as you see we are using this component ADC component this ADC component comes with uh, this pin specification that is plus voltage ground this SCL SDA these are the two connections that we need to make on a board plus this positive and negative uh, voltage connection then this is the channel 0 for which we have programmed our ADC to listen so here we are going to connect the potentiometer this potentiometer also comes with three connections these are like positive voltage negative voltage and this is the data uh, through which here is the pin used to uh, pass on the data to the channel so here we are going to uh, rotate this potentiometer for different resistance we are going to create different regist resistance using this uh, potentiometer and those values are actually in the form of analog these values will be listened at the channel a0 and those values will be plotted on this oscilloscope this way so let us see how the steps can be the steps can be used to generate oscilloscope 
before uh, generating let me tell you that how to find SCL and STL so you can use the command GPIO read all so when you will press enter you will get this information so this are the physical connections of this 40 pins so if you want to know where is the SCL and STU connection you see here that the first pin of Raspberry Pi is 3.3 volt second pin is 5 volt third pin is SDA fourth pin is again 5 volt you see these are the pin numbers and these are the pin specifications if you are using DCM pin specifications so these are this and this is the column for DCM specification here we are using this physical pin out uh, specification so you can find this SDA as third pin and SCL as the fifth pin you can use any of uh, this 3.3 uh, volt or this 5 volt as positive voltage pin and you can use this as a ground pin there are a lot of different uh, ground pins are given similarly there are this positive pins are also given you can make the connection with any of this so let us see how to do the circuit setup so let us start with the circuit setup we require a raspberry pi microcontroller we require a breadboard if you don't have this T connector that is still okay you can simply use this analog to digital converter uh, to connect this analog to digital connector with this pins you can use this female to female connectors wherein you can insert a wire like this in ADC and then you can insert the another end into these pins of raspberry pi in this way so if you don't have this breadboard or this t connector you can simply use this adc and this type of jumper wires these are female to female jumper wires so uh, here i'm going to use breadboard and i'm going to use this t connector so that i am not actually dealing with the raspberry pins directly and hence i am preventing the potential damage to this pins so to insert this you can gently insert it like this and now all the functionalities of this raspberry pi are derived to these pins so i need a analog to digital converter you see in analog to digital converter there are the pin specifications given so this is positive voltage connection then this is a ground this is scl this is sda and these are the channels on which we are going to listen this analog input and we are going to plot the graph for this input it's in program specifically we are only using this a0 channel so from here the analog input will be given through this analog to digital converter component i will be getting the values uh, converted into digital values that we are going to plot on the oscilloscope simulator so we also need a potentiometer so this is a potentiometer this potentiometer is having three different connections one is for the ground one pin is for positive and this is the pin which will be providing us the inputs so this this pin we are going to connect to this a0 the channel analog to digital so we are going to connect these pins using a breadboard this can be connected to any of this ground pin and this end can be connected to any of this positive pin so let us go for a circuit setup so this analog to digital converter i'm going to insert it into a breadboard like this so press it gently to insert it into the breadboard now my first connection is positive voltage so i'm using a red color pin for that these are the male to male jumper wires i'm going to use this male to male jumper wires to connect my circuit second pin was a ground pin so i'm using a black color for that so this you see that the first pin is positive voltage so i'm going to use this positive voltage to connect this uh, to the positive 
pin this is the this is the ground pin so i'm going to connect this raspberry pi with plus voltage and the ground then the next pin is scl so i will connect this scl this is the next pin scl and the next pin is sda so this white color is an scl so i'll be connecting here you see that this scl is already marked on this t connector so for me it is easy but you can read it from gpio read all command and you can find where the scl pin is similarly you can also find the sda you see here it is marked with sda so i can place this as sda pin so my rec is completely completely connected to my raspberry pi now you can connect this potentiometer so as i said this potentiometer have three connection so one of this connection can be inserted in a ground so here this ground pin then there are multiple positive pins so you can use this fourth pin of physical uh, structure pin out of this raspberry pi as the plus 5 voltage so even this raspberry sorry even this potentiometer is connected to the uh, ground and positive and this is the data pin through which we are going to give the analog inputs we are going to move this potentiometer this way and this will create the different analog inputs so this inputs are going to be connected to the a4 so this uh, this was the A3 channel, this was A2, this was A1 and this was A0. So in A0, I am connecting this an in analog input. So the moment I will move this potentiometer in forward or backward direction, similarly the values will be passed on the analog. So here I require my Raspberry Pi to be connected to my laptop screen. For that, I am using advanced IP scanner to scan the IP address of my Raspberry Pi. Remember, this will show me even only in case if my Raspberry Pi and my laptop are connected to the same network. So, my laptop is connected to this RT Wi-Fi. I will show on Raspberry Pi screen also that Raspberry Pi is also connected to the same network. So here is the IP address that we got 192.168.142.165. Now to view the Raspberry Pi screen, I need a VNC viewer. So I'll open this and I've already made some analysis of it. But for you, I'll make it again. So to do that, you go to the new connection and type here the IP address 192.168.43. 0.165 that we just search using advanced IP scanner. Now uh, I have already used few names, so I'll be using this as a name. You can use any of this name. Now this is created. This is the access point for your Raspberry Pi. You double click on it, and here the by default username is Pi, and the password is raspberry in small letters however you can change it to any of this password now you see here my raspberry pi screen is extended on my laptop screen first of all i'll show you that this is also connected to the same wi-fi to which my laptop is connected now to execute the code you can click on this programming and click on python ideally here you can write a new code or you can open the code that you have previously written so the code that i have previously written is in adapt root so here is the code oscilloscope in examples so this code i will try to execute but you see this will give me the error so if you get this error, it means you need to install some libraries like Matplot and Jana. So to do that, you can use the command prompt of this Raspberry Pi. 
So to start with, click on this command prompt. So here we are going to go according to these steps that are of the steps given. So step one is enable Raspberry Pi I2C interface. So I will be copying these steps and here you can write or you can paste those commands like this. So by using this command you will be taken to this screen where you have to select this interfacing option. Click enter so you will be going to this interfacing. Come to this I to see click enter it will ask whether you want to enable they were already enabled in my pc or raspberry pi uh, still you can perform this step just to ensure that the i2c interface is enabled so click enter so this i2c interface is enabled now you can click ok and you can press escape so that you will come out of this then second command is this sudo apt get update and upgrade this you have to do so that all the library files that are being updated continuously uh, should get reflect to your Raspberry Pi microcontroller. So in fact, you can skip this. I have just now done this. It just it takes some time to install uh, to install these libraries. So we need to wait for some time. So this is what how it has taken the installation files now to upgrade this raspberry pi microcontroller you have to use this upgrade option sorry upgrade command so here you can click right click and paste this and this will upgrade this may also take a longer time since i have upgraded it just now so this is done then you have to go to the this cd space this state character and enter will take you to the root directory or parent directory of raspberry pi this is always good to ensure that you are in a parent directory to install some of these dependencies of raspberry pi of this go so the first step is sudo apt get install this git package so just copy this file, oh sorry, copy this command and paste it here and you see this is how it started. Some of these packages are already installed so it may show you the message that this is already installed. Now here also the next step is to clone this git folder into your directory now this may give you this may give me error because i already have this adafruit uh, like uh, i mean adafruit folder uh, cloned into my raspberry pi microcontroller if you are doing it for first time you need it you you should do it and it will not give you an error the next step is you have to go to this folder that we have just now cloned to do that you need a cd command that is change directory command so now you are in, in that folder you see that this folder is here this under this home slash pi so it was already there with me and that's why that fatal error was shown so you are now in this directory then the next step is to go into the uh, next step is to check the setup file so copy this command and paste it here and you see that this setup file is being installed so this was also already installed so um, it may give me a message that it is already there or it is already fulfilled if you are doing it for first time it will install it and sleep then let us go to the next directory that is the examples in adafruit so you see here in adafruit folder there is a folder called examples where all the python script are stored so we are going to this directory so to 
do that you click on cd examples example is, is the folder name then thereafter here you have to execute the file this is the sample file that you are executing just to ensure that your adc is sending you the right values so you see here through all the channels you will get this values now since our uh, channel is one channel that is channel 0 is connected to a potential meter it is it is providing me some value if i am going to change the potential meter value the change you see here that the change will be reflected if i am rotating the potential meter uh, or i am changing the voltage values of potential meter so accordingly the values are changed only on this channel rest all are almost similar so i can press control c to get out of this the next step is to go back to the parent directory to install this mat plot library so i can use this cd cd to to go to the parent directory then uh, you have to install this uh, mat plot library so you can use this command so this mat plot library it is already there with me so you see that i'm getting some error for that because it is already there with me then you can install this uh, draw now to so to do that click on this command paste this command here and this will install the draw now library and this is the last step this that was to get the drone library and this last command is to install it so this will install the drone tool so that the output of oscilloscope can be seen on the oscilloscope simulated oscilloscope so you see that requirement is already satisfied this is the message that i'm getting because i have already installed this drone so that's it this the, this was all that we need to uh, execute the oscilloscope program so to execute the oscilloscope program as i have already shown you that this program is here in this adapt root and examples folder so to execute this for command or uh, and program you can click on programming in python 3 ideally which is by default given in raspberry pi so from here you can open that module so which is there in this adapter examples and this oscilloscope so this is the program now one thing that you should notice that if you are in python id 3 third version and if you try to execute it it may give you error like this so this is showing me an error so if you see though we have this matplot library installed it will show this error so you can do one thing is just close this programs in python 3 ide you can come to the cmd prompt and type here id earlier by using this you will get the ID of lower version Python. So you see that this is now Python 2 version. So in this, you can open the program from this adapter folder, examples folder. So this is how in Python 2 uh, version you have opened it. Now you click on the module. So now you see that this will uh, not show you the error and this will listen to that channel and you see at the same time it is plotting the values so here right now um, the potentiometer is set to the highest value so you are not able to see the values now if i'm moving this potentiometer so you will be able to see that the values will be plotted so you see the values started plotting so it's because i am rotating the potentiometer for different to create the different 
registers so you see the values are being plotted and as well as you see that the values that are being listened at the uh, channel 0 are accordingly so if they are beyond this 4000 the values are actually can't be seen but if the values are less you see the values are being plotted so now I'll be using smaller values and I'm rotating the potentiometer in such a way that I'm getting the smaller values so here you see that according to that the values will be plotted so I'm just using the smaller values so you see on the channel the values are around 2000 or no, less than 2000 or going to 3000 or 4000 so that way this analog values through this potentiometer through channel 0 we are plotting it on the oscilloscope so now I am not moving the value so that will plot the constant value so I am not moving the values at all and you see that at, on channel 0 the values that are being listened are almost constant like 1 or 0 so small variance is always there but you see that all the samples that are being plotted are constant the moment I'll start changing the values you see the value read at channel 0 are different and it will plot the different samples here also so this is how you can simulate the oscilloscope on Raspberry Pi so here you see the output is being plotted on the oscilloscope the way i am moving this potentiometer to different values those values are being plotted on the oscilloscope so you see the values greater than 4000 will not be plotted they are beyond the scope of this plot as i am moving this potentiometer towards a smaller value the values are being plotted here so this way using potentiometer you can create different voltage values in terms of analog input and this analog input through ADC will be converted into digital and this will be plotted on this oscilloscope thank you for watching this video